What are the challenges that practitioners run into or people trying to execute this process? What challenges do they run into in the organization? Well, the first one is time. I mean, people are busier than ever. You know, organizations are leaner than ever. So people are doing, you know, more than their own job in most, in most cases. So, so time, it's a big ask of people to spend, you know, a workshop, a half-day workshop mm -hmm. a week for, you know, six to eight weeks to spend on this. But I also think it's critical that they do. I mean, that's what it's going to take to really gain some insights about potential disruptions and discontinuity. So time is one. Because if you don't put in the time, you're not going to get the product yeah. you want. Yeah, the, well, nothing makes me um, you know, more anxious than seeing scenario planning done as a you know, two or three day workshop because it's just going to shortcut the process. The outcomes aren't going to be useful yeah. and then people are, might conclude you're done after that, you walk that it away. didn't work. Yeah, so, so I think putting in the time is a big ask and it's critical to the process. Um, other stumbling blocks are, are things like the politics inside an organization. That's why the, the makeup of the scenario team is so critical. I mean, um, you know, if people start to get controlling of the process or you have really dominant personalities that, mm -hmm. that shut down that creative, you know, mm -hmm. kind of free, safe mm -hmm. space to talk, you know, that can be a problem. And there's strategies. I mean, that's, again, why um, part of the interviews up front give you the lay of the land of, you know, who might be really dominant and okay. how those things might be managed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there really is a, this is where scenario planning starts to overlap with kind of organization development and change right. as a discipline, is managing those inter, interpersonal dynamics is a big part of the process. Plus, you don't want a bunch of yes people either, right? You right. want some cantanker, right. cantankerous people yep. involved because they, they'll they put another view on the Yeah, on the absolutely. Wall. You're looking for arguments. I mean, you know, I mm -hmm. mean, it, People get really passionate about things going on in their organizations. That's a good sign. Yeah, it creates but friction. I think you even mentioned a little bit about this, right? About yeah. scenarios create friction, and yeah, you want to. that friction to yeah to that's, pull it together. That's how people have new insights. Uh, yeah. But again, there has to be maturity to it. There has to be a, mm -hmm. a reasonableness to hearing out other points of view, and, mm -hmm. and that's a really important um, thing to know up front. Um, the last thing I'll say about stumbling blocks is, you know, kind of well, two more leadership support again. If a, if a leader unplugs his or her support for the, for the effort, mm -hmm. that really can have a, a, you know, undesirable effect. And then finally, too many scenarios. So some people get into these um, really unstructured scenario processes where it's kind of a free-for-all. Like, what about this scenario? What about that scenario? Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you've got 8, 10, 12 scenarios, it becomes unmanageable and people can't keep them straight. So, um, so those are. What is the right number? Major. Five to seven, uh, three I think, to two. You know the the process. If you use the process laid out in the book here, um, there's four. It's just a an outcome of the structure of the process. Um, some companies are using two, and some are using three. I will make one point about that, and that is, the 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 critical thing is to avoid the best case scenario, the worst case scenario, and the status quo scenario because. Let's face it, I can generate those off the top of my head. Yeah. It doesn't take much more than 30 seconds, and nobody's learning anything. Mm -hmm. So the scenarios, whether you use two, three, or four, they've got to be deep, deeply questioning, deeply analytical, you know, deeply compelling stories mm -hmm. of alternatives, and that's the key. Yeah. In, your, in your view, I mean, organizations need to be, this should be part of a, an initiative, or it's just a typical process, right? We shouldn't be... It shouldn't just be two and three every year or every other year. It's something that they're constantly doing every as a, a way of doing business, as Shell did. Yeah, I mean, I think scenarios have to become institutionalized. I mean, I think it's a process that has sh shown utility. And so I think as a supplement to whatever strategic planning might be underway mm -hmm. um, or as a full-blown featured project or, or, or process of its own, yeah, I think, I think scenarios should be used. I think they've demonstrated utility enough that they're used. I don't think that there's like a time, a set time, like every year you do your scenarios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you, you create a new set of scenarios when there's potential volatility and it's time to update. 